Hi, I'm North Dakota Forest Service Forest Stewardship Manager Liz Smith, and I'd like to welcome you to Forestry Fridays. This week, I'm sharing new species for North Dakota windbreaks. Windbreaks are an essential part of North Dakota's unique landscape. These tree plantings are carefully designed to achieve conservation, economic, and social goals. They are an important component of many agricultural systems and can improve rural life in the Northern Plains. In North Dakota, windbreaks are most often planted on land that did not grow trees originally, as our climate, soils, and topography are better suited to grassland type ecosystems. Early settlers developed their windbreaks using seedlings they found in patches of native forest, particularly along rivers. Cottonwood, green ash, box elder, and American elm were favorites. Many Europeans were familiar with vast conifer forests of their home countries and were sad to learn that evergreens are very rarely found growing naturally in North Dakota. Just some pine and juniper out in the southwest and not a single native spruce could be found. Over the years by trial and sometimes error, we have expanded our understanding of trees and shrubs that can be successfully established in North Dakota windbreaks in spite of the non-hospitable conditions. Many of our now favorite windbreak species are not indigenous to the areas in which they are planted, and some are not native to North, North America. Each year, millions of dollars are invested in windbreaks and landowners expect these windbreaks to establish successfully, grow quickly, and be functional for decades. The new species for North Dakota Windbreaks project will expand the list of recommended species deemed suitable for planting in windbreaks on various sites in North Dakota. For many of us, landscaping our residence is a true joy. We eagerly wait for the latest new university releases that offer a special shape or fall color and promise to be cold hardy and tough enough for North Dakota. However, remember that windbreaks are designed to serve a purpose and they have work to do, hard work to modify the flow of wind and control wind-driven snow. Being pretty isn't our first concern. Being tough enough to make it is. Our windbreak trees also need to grow from seed or cuttings so that we can cost efficiently plant them by the hundreds. And they need to establish and thrive with little care for decades. This presentation isn't about landscaping. Few ornamentals are suitable for windbreaks, but pick a nice spot in your yard to pamper one of the amazing variety of visually stunning cold hardy specimen trees that are available and enjoy. When it comes to windbreaks, probably the best argument for considering new species is the need to diversify. When we over rely on a few different species, our windbreak can be wiped out by a pest or disease or climate extreme like drought. American elm and its cousin Siberian elm were fast growing go to windbreak species used across the state. But over dependence on elm allowed a Dutch elm disease to decimate many of our mature windbreaks, especially our single row field windbreaks planted to control soil erosion. Green ash is a wonderful North Dakota native that compri comprises a large percentage of our natural, community, and conservation tree plantings. But the looming threat of emerald ash borer makes the need to diversify even more urgent. When we think about species that might perform well in North Dakota, we have tools in our toolbox that guide us. We don't have to just stick a tree in the ground and cross our fingers. To outsiders, North Dakota may seem relatively uniform, but is actually highly variable from the Red River Valley in the east to the Prairie Pothole region to the Badlands of the Southwest. Major Land Resource Areas, or MLRA, are geographically associated land resource units delineated by the Natural Resource Conservation Service and characterized by a particular pattern that combines soils, water, climate, vegetation, land use, and type of farming. Conservation tree and shrub groups, or CTSGs, are a tool for matching woody plants to the soils that are best suited to the woody plant requirements for survival and growth. 
A CTSG is a physiographic unit or area having similar climatic and soil influence characteristics that control the selection and height growth of trees and shrubs. A certain species might be capable of surviving on a particular site, but survival alone doesn't make a functional windbreak. The trees and shrubs we plant need to achieve a certain height and fullness, not just stay alive. CTSGs typically begin with an MLRA and then are further refined to a list of woody plants based on groupings of soil characteristics such as depth, available water capacity, pH, and depth to growing season water table. In North Dakota, our technical guidance splits North Dakota into east and west along a line that basically follows the edge of the Missouri Coteau and representing a change in average annual moisture regime. The eastern part of North Dakota is classified as humid or subhumid, where generally irrigation is not required for crop production. The western part of North Dakota is classified as semi-arid, with moisture that is limited, but is present at a time when conditions are right and suitable for plant growth. Obviously, this is not a line that you can see on the ground, and there will be some variability of rainfall and moisture from year to year. But trees and shrubs are expected to grow for decades through wet cycles and dry cycles, so it's wise we keep this classification in mind. All soil series phases or soil map units are placed into 10 groups of similar soils which align to conservation tree and shrub groups. All groups except group 10 are further divided into subgroups. Counties that are split by an MLRA or specific species limitation may use either interpretation. Landowners often express interest in species that are not currently known to be suited to North Dakota or may only be suited to certain sites. It's important we remind ourselves and landowners we work with that not all trees will grow in North Dakota and some will only grow on certain sites. Web Soil Survey allows us to choose the windbreak site and find out which CTSGs are present which we can confirm via site evaluation. The NRCS Field Office Technical Guide Expected 20-Year Tree Heights give us a list of species known to establish on these different CTSGs and how tall we can expect each of these species to grow in a windbreak. Throughout this presentation, as I share some new species to consider, I'll also share the CTSGs that these species have the best potential to thrive. In upcoming years with the New Species for North Dakota project, we will evaluate these trees on these sites to confirm suitability and expected height. Common hackberry is a North Dakota native that can be a great alternative to green ash or elm for use as a tall deciduous in farmstead and field windbreaks. Its crown is irregularly oval with dense foliage and numerous slender branches. The bark is light gray and quirky, and it bears fruit favored by wildlife. Common hackberry is already recommended for many sites in North Dakota and shows good potential on many others. American linden, a young one, is shown here on the left. It becomes a large tree and is native to eastern North Dakota. Little leaf linden is native to Europe and has smaller leaves than American linden. Both linden have beautiful showy flowers attractive to pollinators, and it's said linden flower honey is the best in the world. Try American linden on produ productive sites in the western part of the state, since it's already known to grow well on these sites in the east. It'll be best if the trees have access to water since they are not drought tolerant. Little leaf linden hasn't been used extensively in North Dakota windbreaks, but we should give it a try on productive sites in the eastern part of the state. North Dakota's mighty native bur oak deserves to be considered more often for use in windbreaks. It's hardy and very long-lived and provides excellent wildlife food and cover. Oak gets a bad rap for being slow growing, but once established can grow up to two feet a year, a growth rate that is impressive by any standard. You can give bur oak a try on many different sites from Eastern North Dakota to Western. When grown from known hardy seed sources, black walnut can be successfully established in windbreaks and is a valuable source of wildlife food. Black walnut like, likes moist, well-drained soil and doesn't tolerate ponding or drought. 
Honey locust is a fast growing medium sized tree with small pinnately compound leaves that are unique and large showy curly Q seed pods. Honey locust is well adapted to a variety of sites as long as the site is protected. Try it as a center or inside row of a multi-row windbreak. Meyer spruce offers some genetic diversity for our windbreaks and should be considered as an alternative to our much beloved Black Hills and Colorado blue spruce. Try Meyer spruce on sites that other kinds of spruce will grow. Norway spruce is another alternative to the more commonly used Colorado blue and Black Hill spruce species. As with Meyer spruce, try it where other kinds of spruce are growing. Lodgepole pine is similar to ponderosa pine in terms of height and preferred site conditions. However, lodgepole pine have much shorter needles and smaller cones and a narrow, straighter trunk. Give lodgepole pine a try anywhere you would plant ponderosa pine. Douglas fir is not a true fir, nor is it a spruce or a pine or a hemlock. Their needles are short, soft, and flat, and occur singly in rows that surround each branch, giving them a unique appearance. Douglas fir is relatively new to North Dakota windbreaks, but give them a try on productive sites throughout the state. No matter whether you're trying something new or a species you've tried for years, be sure your plant material comes from a northern hardy seed source. Ideally, Seeds collected from trees growing in North Dakota. When in doubt, ask. Excellent site preparation and ongoing control of sod forming grasses will help your new windbreak establish and stay functional. If you or a producer you're working with is interested in trying something new and you're not sure about it, ask for a second opinion. North Dakota Forest Service foresters are happy to share what they know about how a particular species has performed in North Dakota, good or bad. Remember, our windbreaks need to be tough enough to withstand adverse conditions and perform for decades. Being pretty is great, but shouldn't be our number one priority. Species diversity is like windbreak insurance. If possible, no two rows of a windbreak should be the same species. This is particularly true for space-limited windbreaks containing the minimum number of rows. And last but not least, let us know when you try out these new species or try out an old or known species on a new kind of site. We want to know how they are doing and, if possible, evaluate them to compare to our tried and true favorites. Working together, we can expand the list of new species for North Dakota windbreaks. Thanks for taking the time to view this video. For more information on trees or forest management, visit the North Dakota Forest Service website, follow us on Facebook, and check out our Forestry Friday videos on our Forestry Friday YouTube channel.